Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video today I'm here with Spice and Wolf episode number 23 reaction okay the previous episode um so we got to um Elsa and uh, this time however Hollow had a plan so basically they kind of tricked her into um being in front of God and that is when Lauren said that oh like I have a few things to discuss about can we just confirm whether it's true or not and you cannot lie because you're in front of God. So he asks the question whether this is the Abby that they're looking for and all the other stuff. And obviously she had to admit it there. So they had a conversation after that and uh, you know, we got to know and she, by the end of it, she kind of agreed to show us the stories that Father Franz has written. So, you know, like Lawrence kind of paid her uh, for that. And you know, like then they, we got to read the stories and all the other stuff later on Evan also comes in and we had like a dinner and stuff you know and then back to reading the stories again and you know uh, he and Hollow had a few conversations and everything but the main thing is that by the end of it turns out that Enver is trying to or at least it seems like that they're trying to pin the blame on um, you know like people here in Tereo and one of the messengers came in and he was like, oh, because we like, you know, had the flower of this place, um, someone has died or something. So I think like this is their attempting to pin the blame on them and make it like a reason to attack them because that's what they're planning. So, you know, something like that happened. And now all the villagers here are here and, you know, it's like a weird type of a situation. So let's see what happens. Um, yeah, let us begin. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Think it to whichever is the preference and let's get started. Right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh, here we go. Oh boy. What? Weed that's been poisoned by disease. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah, now, now it's going to be a problem because, oh, it spreads, yeah, well, wait a minute, doesn't Lawrence have, Lawrence has weed, doesn't he, but I guess he cannot really, Bro, he never sold you guys any. Okay, great. Yeah. Which will be returned and... Yeah, they're going to attack. Exactly. I feel like they're, they're, this is like a plan. Like nobody died. They're just... Or maybe not. I don't know. Bro, you guys do something then. Yeah, you guys do it then. Like, what the hell? Well, yeah.
Yeah, like what? Why would even Lawrence do that? What an idiotic thing to even think about. These people are stupid. Like, just think about it. Like, just think about it. Why would Lawrence come here? Like, why? Like, there must be some kind of a reason. He, like, they think like Lawrence is some kind of a spy sent by Ember, and then trying to he's trying to sabotage them or something. Ah, oh, good God. And you think, like, if that's the case, Lawrence would still stay here while all of this is happening. He would have taken his leave very well, you know, well within time so that the whole thing doesn't fall on him. Good God. And the fact that they're blaming Elsa, I'm like, guys, if that's your problem, then, like, like try to appoint someone else and do the job yourself then. The fact that, the, you know, like they're at least even holding it up until now, Enver is not at their neck trying to get them, is a fact because Elsa is able to, like, you know, keep it like that. If Elsa didn't de do, you know, like that, that whole thing, Enver would have found, a, you know, like it, a lot earlier they would have come and did something. <clears throat> like, yeah, obviously, Father France was probably, like, very competent and very... You know, but you cannot expect everyone to be like that just from the get-go. Elsa is new to this. Like, like this is one thing that annoys me so much. Like, people trying to, uh, you know, like, like question others' competence when they themselves aren't able to do anything about that. Like, shut the hell up. Go and sit down. You can, you guys cannot do anything about this. Just shut up. Exactly. <coughs> I see. That's why they didn't really directly go for Elsa. If you hand the culprit up, that's how they're trying to take them out. Yeah. That looks awfully real. <coughs> oh, I guess. Hmm. Right. Yeah, that is the question. Uh, Evan. Yep. No, but then, yeah. Then that's just running away. And Lawrence doesn't want that. <laughs> yeah. Bro, we're just merchants, like, the, oh god. Well. Hmm. Yep, I, I was exactly thinking, like, they think that we are spies or something. Oh my god. Hmm. What? These, oh my god, these guys are paranoid. <laughs> they are paranoid. Hmm. Money, like, yeah, he's a, he's a merchant. So, safety. Yeah, we can just leave. Yeah, so you're just gonna take money from us and threat. This literally, they're threatening us. Okay, you know what? That's a good, good thing. Right. 
Okay, that's fair. If we're able to get out of this, then you'll have to compensate us. Hmm. Credit them to us. Right. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Also, who knows what's going to happen next year? Yeah. True. Yep. Okay. So yeah, they're, they're, they're tricking us. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Hmm. No, oh, Evan is here as well. I didn't see him. Yeah, like it's going to make the situation even. What? Oh, okay. Ah, okay, I see. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if you forgot, you saw her, yes. <laughs> right. Evan. But then you as well, yep. Literally, that means everyone's have to run away. Hmm. Wait. Someone outside? Yeah, the hollow heard him. Hmm. Well, we have to be yeah, careful. Whoa, what? Well, what just happened? Whoa. 
What? <laughs> oh, because of... Wow. <laughs> Crocodile TS, yeah. Yeah, she just went in and grabbed it. Oh boy. <laughs> well, yeah, she said she wants to read it alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Seven to remember coins short if they return all the weight. Okay. Still can no longer use. Hmm. Yeah. That is true. Like these people just, just, just lays around and just literally do nothing. Do the bare minimum. Whoa, what's happening? Is she okay? She's stressed or something. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't think Elsa would want to leave here. Uh, I don't know. True. But, you know, like, this place has been left by Father Franz. Yeah, like, like, this is what annoyed me about the people here. They're ungrateful. Like, you can literally see that. Yeah, but Elsa wouldn't want. I'm pretty sure she would say no. Will she be? Uh, but maybe, you know what? If Evan does it, maybe he, she'll get convinced. Well, <laughs> that true. She's talking about you. Oh boy. Hmm. Okay. What did she learn? Okay. Whoa, what's possible lack of credit? Shred apart by bear's claws. What's that paper? Wait. Oh. Okay, so uh, the people ran away. Okay. Hmm. 
Dah. Something more valuable than each other. Oh, damn. True. <laughs> hmm. Damn. Oh, great. There we go. Bro, just, yeah, you know what? At this point, let's just leave. Like, let them do whatever the hell they want. Good God. I don't think they're going to listen. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, let's go then. Yeah, don't say any word. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just the alcohol talking, you know. <laughs> Jump over the crowd with her. Oh yeah, that is true. Hmm. Yeah. It's very. <laughs> oh boy. Ah. Mm. <laughs> oh boy. Damn. Okay, here we go. All right, transformation time. Oh, a little bit more, I guess. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. So, wait, I think next episode is the final episode, isn't it? Episode 24. So, right. This arc will be concluding and hopefully we get another season in the future.
Hmm. That was today's episode. Okay, that was uh, episode number 23. Um, right, so... Basically, today's episode was uh, the villagers blaming them. And, uh, you know, uh, us deciding to, like, run away by the end and uh, get out of here. Just, you know, taking um, Evan and Elsa with us. So, I think, like, this is the first time I've seen Hollow actually reveal her true identity in front of so many people. Like, actually, you know, like, because, um, what's her name? Elsa already knows. Uh, now, Evan got to know about it. That lady also got to know. So, you know, like three people like got to know in this one little arc, three people got to know about um, uh, Hollow's true identity. But, you know, nothing else we could have done in this situation. Like, it, that was the only thing left to do. <laughs> okay, so a few things I need to talk about here. First and foremost, this village. Now, this thing, like they kind of um, like mentioned this before as well. But one of the biggest reasons I got so like pissed off at the people of this village is one thing that um, the lady, uh, you know, that lady, uh, the the beer lady, I, I forgot her name, or I don't even remember if they mentioned her name. Um, she mentioned is that the people in this village are just, and and even Lawrence backed that up. That the people in this village are just they they are like they they don't what is that word like they like take advantage of the um the benefit that they have gotten from you know like other people like father france like you know the like take, making that tr like that that uh, agreement that they did with Enbet, all these stuff they have taken advantage of that so much and they barely even i guess you could say like what can i say like first and foremost they're not appreciative enough that's number one and number two they like you know they don't work hard enough to you know like make sure that that keeps going because these people it, it seems, it's like a very like what can i say like a very infuriating type of situation where they just have taken advantage of this you know like this uh, this treaty this agreement this thing they haven't shown anything to show appreciation to father france more so they even mentioned that they literally i think evan said this that they literally gave anything to father france like you know like didn't help them out like you know in in like you know in means of donations and other stuff you know obviously like which which, which they need like they barely gave anything to them um, they looked down upon them. Not only that, they themselves just laze around all day. You know, Lawrence mentioned this on the very first, uh, in the I think like in the second episode of this arc, that people here are too much lax. They like you know in the morning they're just like moving around doing literally nothing and just you know like joking around and everything. You know, while Lawrence says that usually in this type of a time people get up early in the morning to work on their fields. You know especially farmers and uh, you know stuff like that so these people they have uh, like basically they're pampered like that's like one word for it they are pampered they have been pampered so much that don't they like have taken that for granted up until now and now they don't know what they're going to do you know so they've been they've been taking advantage of that treaty because here's another thing i even mentioned this in the previous episode that this treaty seems too good for for one party like you know like like Enbe, they literally they were like you know like exempting tax for them for i think clothing and one other material i forgot what oh alcohol i think alcohol and clothing not only that and uh, you know they are obviously buying all the wheat from them and giving them appropriate compensation for that and uh, you know like and stuff and, and and they were just they were just chill with it they were like oh this is perfect so the treaty was like the the agreement that they come came to was too one-sided like you know it was heavily in favor for people here in Tereo, and they just took it for granted you know also like you know what it's fine you know like they can take it for granted but at least show some basic decency as a human being to at least respect the people who got you this that is father Franz and elsa as well you know they don't even show that like this is a typical like you know ungrateful like how ungrateful people work 
you know, like they, they just take everything and never give anything. And on top of that, they, they show their arrogant attitude when the situation goes in a little bit of a wrong direction. They show their arrogant attitude. Like they, these type of people act as if that the world revolves around them. You know, they've never like, you know, like done anything to get to the point where they deserve. And they just think that everything will come into their, like hopping into their lap without them contributing anything and just doing nothing. Like, yeah, I'm not saying that they're not working. Yeah, they're definitely working. They're definitely like, you know, like cultivating the wheat and all that stuff. But, you know, like they, they don't realize how good of a situation they were in. And even if they didn't realize that, it's fine. You know, like a lot of people, um, most people, you know, like depend on other people, you know, for a lot of things, you know, like they depend on other people. Other people go give them stuff without expecting anything in return. That is completely fine. But you know what is not fine? Being a complete ass like this, you know, at least so the basic human decency to, to, to respect the people, like, the way they're treating Elsa and, you know, like, like Father Franz, as they said before as well, they also treated Father Franz not very well. That is what is pissing me off. It's not the fact that they are take, like, you know, they are just getting everything without it. Yeah, it's fine. You know, a lot of people are like that. A lot of people cannot do anything in this situation. It's completely fine. But at least show the basic human decency to treat the person who is helping you so much, that's Father Franz and, you know, like Elsa, in a better way. The first thing that these people do as soon as they see the situation, they blame Elsa and like some like an other people. They don't point the, the fingers towards them or they don't even try to think that, oh, you know what, this is a problem, but you know, it's a problem that is, you know, like not their fault. You know, this is a problem that, you know, like all of us have to face. So let's not just blame someone and try to think of the solution. No, the first thing they do, they, they come with pitchforks and they start blaming others. They're like, oh, it's because of those outsiders. And, and another idiotic thing, I never, like, you know, re, like, you know, I never understood why they didn't think this. They never thought that it is Ember doing this. Maybe it's Ember's people who are actually, like, tricking them. They never thought about that. That is, the, some, that is something that was so weird. I was like, what the hell? The first thing you do is blame us. Couldn't you think that maybe this is something that Ember is trying to do just so that they can you know, like, take you guys out and they can uh, take out the, the, the agreement that they came up with Father France. No, the first thing they do is blame, uh, uh, like, uh, Lawrence. Like, yeah, I can understand them blaming Lawrence because they don't know who he is. They think that he's some kind of maybe like some Ember spy or something like that. But, you know, like, then that's fine. But Elsa, really? Like, really? Like, good God, like, I cannot believe, like, they, they brought Elsa's name up as well. The, the person who has been staying here, and I'm sure they, like, know Elsa from her for a long time. You know, Father Franz was there, Elsa was there from then, you know. And, yeah, so it's just, uh, good Lord, I, I just cannot, you know. Like, these, like, this is just, and also the, um, what's his name? The, the village chief. You know, he was at least a little bit, I guess you could say, cooperative. But still, at the end of the day, he was also was like, oh, like, right, you just, you give us money. He tells Lawrence, give us money. Otherwise, you know, and in the end, Lawrence was like, yeah, you're, so you're threatening us. That basically, they're going to give us money. Otherwise, we'll not let you leave. And uh, then in the end, Lawrence does tell him that, okay, you know, I'll give you money. But this is a prior investment. You know, if everything goes well, then, you know then i'll i'll come back for compensation and i get everything back um yeah that that agreement did happen but it was just so like what can i say the whole situation is just so you know and the attitude of the villagers is what is making me even more pissed off like absolute um like pampered rats they are that's what it seems like they, they literally they they just like you know they don't have any type of um you know like basic respect for the one person that is Father Franz who has done, done so much for them and like the way they were like, you know, treating uh, Elsa, it, it was just absolutely, in, you know, yeah. Like I, I genuinely thought, you know what, these people need to fend for themselves. Let, let's let's just, just leave them to their devices. Let them, let them face what's going to come. 
you know like up until now elsa was trying her so hard to help this village help everyone you know like she try and and now this is what she's getting this is the treatment that she's getting after all that she went through uh, and now it's just you know i'm like you know what just 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 leave them to their devices they, these people need to learn it the hard way like it's no other way they'll be able to learn you know like because if we somehow like you know i are is able we are able to make the situation okay you know they they will never learn they will keep being like this absolute you know like complete um like pathetic excuse of you know like like i just i i think they they need to learn, learn the hard way like you know like after the end bed comes in takes out the treaty and you know like then they'll realize what they had and what they lost because i think like, i feel like that's what's going to happen because you know like elsa and um what's his name evan is going away so now who will be backing this place no one elsa at least got someone to back so i don't know like i feel like the things are going to go in that direction like exactly in the direction trend that i'm thinking you know like now enber will take this opportunity probably like after elsa and evan lay leaves it will uh, enber will take this opportunity to completely nullify the treaty you know and then as uh, i think like lawrence here like in a detailed manner explains like what's going to happen he says like you know first they'll get it through credit and then every year you know since the the i think I, i'm going to read that part in the discussion the discussion section detailed discussion section because i need to understand that but what i could understand from that is that every year you know since the money will be fixed you know more and more the year goes you know more and more they'll be in a difficult situation and the debt will probably increase so it, it, they're going to take opportunity for that you know you take advantage of that and one day they'll suddenly and they will suddenly be like oh i'm we are like you know we were uh, uh, annulling the treaty we are we are destroying the treaty that that treaty that agreement that father france did with you doesn't exist anymore and then they'll tax them tax them like they used to and then after that maybe a day will come when they'll suddenly be like oh you guys you know like we are taking this village under our control and they'll attack them you know that's how this is going to end so yeah that's what's going to happen now that elsa is gone at least that's what i think is going to happen so i just you know what i i just cannot these people they they just their attitude pisses me off so much i i cannot believe what was going on over there like literally trying to put the blame on the person who's been trying to help you the only thing that i feel bad about is this lady this uh, you know the the beer lady like she's a nice lady but you know she she's also going to get involved in this nonsense because she's living here you know that's the only thing i feel bad about all the other people i don't give a crap you know like all these people here they're just they're just uh what's that word opportunistic is that a is that a word is that that's the word isn't it opportunistic yeah they look for their own like you know like a gain that kind of thing and so that that's the only that that lady and her husband those two are the only people i feel bad for and i don't know maybe maybe the village chief a little bit i don't feel completely like another you know, village chief at least like listened to us and tried to cooperate but everyone else they are just yeah you know what screw them <laughs> like really um and i feel like that's exactly what's going to happen because they're leaving now now what's going to happen you know i guess you know lawrence is going to probably go to the association and i don't know what's going to happen uh, but you know what let's wait and see and for evan and um elsa i genuinely don't know what they're going to do i'm guessing uh, you know from the looks of it from what i heard that lady tell them that lady told them to like you know find a different place and like settle down there maybe they're just going to do that they're going to find like a different village maybe you know and i don't know a nice village and they're going to settle down over there and yeah like i feel like the only reason elsa was like still here struggling was because of father franz because his her father she uh, he did so much for this place and you know that's why elsa wanted to keep that going and wanted everyone just like father franz want, wanted everyone to be you know 
like yeah and, and want to protect this place but now like it's it's just all over like yeah but like you know one good thing is obviously like the villagers they don't realize what's going to happen and they think that we are trapped here but we are actually not because we have hollow with us like nobody knows about that and uh, you know they have no idea that hollow can literally just leave with everyone here so they are thinking like oh these guys are trapped here they won't be able to go anywhere and even if they try to run it's a huge distance it's a long journey you know so they're not going to do that but they have no idea like hollows here so you know they don't expect them to just leave so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they react when they realize that they're just gone and now you guys are just left with your own problems you guys will have to face it you guys cannot like blame others for your own problems and be like oh it's your fault you know that kind of thing so yeah and you know what if you think about it i feel like this this would have been the end either way because just think about it if if like lawrence and hollow didn't come here this would have happened and you know like and so they would find some other way to blame them and as Lauren said, what they would have done is probably come here and be like, oh, who's the one responsible for this? You know, hand them over. And they would probably hand over um, Evan and maybe Elsa as well to them. And, uh, you know, and then they would, the end bed would be like, okay, and then the whole credit thing would happen. And then without Elsa, you know, nobody would be backing them up. So little by little, this whole village would have fallen into ruin eventually so i feel like this would have happened eventually either way you know like they i don't know i don't know what they should have done i you know I, what i think what these people should have done like you know i feel like that then only um this problem wouldn't have happened be be actual nice people that's all they needed to do they actually needed to be like you know cooperative with lawrence maybe cooperative with elsa you know, not treat them like crap, like, you know, especially Elsa. And, you know, then maybe Elsa with her backing from the other person, backing from the church, she would have been able to help with that. And Ben would have been a lot more cautious about dealing with them. Because as Lauren said, that they wouldn't directly try to mess with Elsa because they know Elsa has a backing. So, you know, and Ben would have been a lot more cautious. They wouldn't have done it so hastily. Now they know that they literally, you know, like, so they're, they're making them fall into a trap. So all that these villagers, all these people that they needed to do is be a good person. Like, you know, like an actual, like, you know, person, like a, like a, you know, like at, at least show a little bit of human decency. You know, if they had a good, like, you know, connection with Elsa, good relationship with Elsa and Father Franz, if they, uh, you know, like, like didn't do immediately, uh, you know, like suspect Lawrence, but the Lawrence situation, like I said, I cannot really blame them for the Lawrence situation because technically, if you think about it, Lawrence came out of nowhere, so they are just suspicious about him. So you know what? Scratch Lawrence out. You know, like I don't expect them to be, you know, like immediately trusting of Lawrence. It's fine, but all they needed to do is like be more, I guess you could say, like nicer to Elsa and Father Franz. A lot of these problems wouldn't have happened then, I feel like, because Elsa and, you know, like, and the, if the villagers, they were properly, like, you know, like, connected, they would have thought of a plan together to somehow stop this, you know. And then Lawrence would come and maybe, like, you know, like, Elsa, after coming in contact with Lawrence, Elsa could probably vouch for Lawrence and be like, you know what, this person is a good person. He's not a spy from Ember. Then maybe if the villagers trusted him, then Lawrence also could have probably pitched in and help them out and gave them like you know a way to counter this situation or something and you know like maybe this is the way little by little they could have you know like done something about this whole ember situation after father Francis' death but no they decided to blame others you know and now because of that because they're literally trying to make elsa lawrence um evan and hollow the scapegoat because of that we're we're leaving we're just going we're going away now you guys uh solve your own problem which i'm pretty sure they won't be able to you know like they won't be able to solve the problem on their own in no way can they do that <clears throat> so yeah you guys are the reason for your own demise all they needed to do is be a little bit nicer at least that's what i think 
because it's very important you know like because of that because of the way they're treating them like elsa and everyone has to leave this village now like it's absolutely ridiculous yeah now you guys solve your own problems now that you, you guys literally drove her out of this place solve your own problems now whatever yeah and yeah there you go that was today's episode good god the villagers pissed me off today like absolutely just like they immediately like you know they immediately turned they're like oh you guys are at fault it's them again like i said i i could understand them blaming lawrence but really then by the end of it you're also pointing your fingers at elsa and evan <laughs> you know what whatever screw you guys <laughs> Like, I'm okay with them blaming Lawrence. It's because, like, you know, like I said, Lawrence is a completely a stranger. Complete stranger. So, it's pretty obvious they kind of suspect him because they think, like, oh, maybe he's, like, some kind of a spy or something. Maybe Enver sent them to do this. That is also what the village chief was asking him. So, I can be okay with that because, you know, like, yeah. Like, it's understandable they're, they're suspecting Lawrence. But, uh, like, yeah, the whole Elsa where they start putting, throwing, pointing fingers towards Elsa and Evan. I'm like, yeah, really? After all of this, like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Solve your own damn problems. Like, if you're just going to blame others, the, the one person who's trying to help you guys, if you're blaming that person, then just do it on your own, I guess. Right. And there you go. And yeah, and that was today's episode. So in the end, they, I think like they're going to like, you know, like leave and you know what, let's wait and see what happens. I'm not really sure what's going to happen to this village because it seems like they're in a very bad situation and they're making it even worse by trying to isolate Elsa and trying to make her the scapegoat. So, yeah. Right. And there you go, that was today's episode. Now, let me talk about this episode scene by scene. In the very first scene, you can see uh, the village and all the villagers are here. And the village chief is talking about the situation. They're talking about the, the, the problem. What is it called? They, 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 it had like a particular term they use. Reday what? Wait a minute. Wait, um... Redelius's Hellfire. So it's a it's a wheat that's been poisoned by disease. You cannot tell if it's poison or wheat field until someone dies from eating it. Right. Hmm. So yeah, basically Enver has said that uh, official representatives will be coming here and plan to return all the wheat from our village. And so everyone's like, what the hell? Like the money, if they want it back, we have to spend it on everything. And also the fact that they kind of mention here is that, and I think like the lady, the, the, that lady kind of mentions that because we had a bumper crop this year, we actually like, because it makes sense, you know, they had a bumper crop, they sold everything and they got a huge amount of money. So they were like, all right, things are looking good. So let's spend it lavishly. So they brought like good ingredients, you know, they kind of, a spurge on the ingredients and stuff and the quality of food so they're eating good now you know now that they are like oh we need the money back and now they're like what the hell we, we spend everything in a very lavish way so you know like what are we supposed to do like if they knew that this would have happened they probably wouldn't have spent that much they probably would have like conserved the money and spend it in a more i guess you could say like a economical way so that when something like this happens they can just take it and you know like compensate them for it um but no they they just spend everything spend everything so now that they're like asking for the money back they're like oh well, what are we supposed to do now um we had a bumper harvest this year yeah quality of food and alcohol went up in my place also the month the price also went up obviously if they use good ingredients she was charging more for it because obviously it's good stuff and people were happily paying for it because again they have money with in their hands you know because they had a bumper crop this and they got a lot of money so you know like 
the everything increased basically and now that they have to give the money back they don't know what to do because they literally have nothing more left now like what can they do right okay here we go um the scary thing is that it doesn't end with just a few deaths mm. Yeah, no telling if other stocks have smart in. Okay, so now here's the part where they're like, oh, these two is poisonous sweet into our hub. Now, like I said, I can understand them blaming Lawrence because technically Lawrence is a stranger. You know, they don't trust him. You know, all that stuff. But what happens after this pissed me off. So they're like, oh, it's Lawrence. And everyone's like, oh, like, you need to go to the water wheel to grind your wheat into flour you conspire with the miller and boy and did so they think that lawrence brought in bad uh, you know like like diseased wheat and he mixed it with their wheat and they took that wheat and sold so they're thinking like he's some kind of a spy sent by enbel doing all of this you know to sabotage them which is understandable because technically lawrence is a stranger here he just suddenly came one day and he was suddenly like oh i want to know about this abbey so people being suspicious of him is understandable, you know. Okay, and then if, uh, Elsa comes in and she's like, please hold on. And then she's like, stay out of this woman. <laughs> and the other lady was like, yeah, like, what did you say? And they kind of like kind of quieten down a little bit here. <laughs> Should have punched him in the face. He knew he was going, he was, he was a, this close to getting punched, you know, if he didn't stop there. <laughs> yeah, anyways, and I'm like, bruh, like, really? Okay, so, and then now everyone is like, oh, didn't Fra Father France set it up the way that they couldn't lay a hand on us, this and that. And then they start blaming Elsa, and I'm like, you guys, screw yourself. Just, whatever the hell you, like, you know, like, just, just do whatever the hell you want. Like, the one person that was trying to help them, trying to get back in from outside and everything, now they're trying to blame her. Like, really, what are you guys doing? Literally. Like, you know, like, this is the thing that pisses me off so much. I've seen this happen a lot of times, is that when someone comments on someone not being able to do something, when they themselves are incompetent they cannot do anything themselves that pisses me the hell off these type of characters are the characters that extremely makes me angry for example um there's a lot of characters like this you see in anime one of the characters that i passionately hate who exactly falls in this category is i i'm I think a lot of people have probably have seen and a lot of people probably haven't seen is from the fate franchise there's a character called shinji you know he's exactly like this who is incompetent himself but you know, he expects other per people to do something in the best way possible. And if that doesn't happen, he starts blaming them and taking the high ground. That pisses me off so much in, you know, this is one type of a character I hate extremely. And they literally do the same thing here. You know, like, obviously, these people, they cannot do anything about this whole treaty situation and this whole backing from the other church and everything. They cannot do anything about it. But they're trying to blame the one person that can do it while they themselves are literally they cannot do anything about it and you're trying to blame the person that is doing it it doesn't matter yeah elsa might not be as good as father france in handling this situation you know it's it's understandable but you guys cannot do even that that little thing as well you guys are completely incompetent in this field at least you know so who the hell gives you right to complain about her competence when you guys literally cannot do anything about the same situation you know like it's as if like like you know like you're trying to complain about someone who's trying to do their job you know the best way possible while you lo literally know nothing no way to do it and you're still complaining about it and blaming them you know and like also the fact that these guys literally like now they're like you know talking about father france they literally mentioned in today's episode that even when father france was alive they, they, they treated him the same way they're treating Elsa. So these people have been trash from the very beginning. They had no compassion, no like basic human decency to treat another person who is doing so much for their, their town in a good way, you know. 
and they're expecting like they, these are privileged brats they are privileged brats as adults which makes me even more angry half of these people are like 50 to 60 years old and they're complaining like little kids absolute pathetic behavior like it's just this is absolutely insane because here's the thing you know it's understandable when a situation gets um this like difficult that people might try start like you know like like panicking and causing chaos it's understandable you know but these people have been like this from the very beginning that is the problem here if they were just acting like this now in this panicky situation i would have been like okay you know what it's a very difficult situation it's a very you know like scary situation they're panicking that's why they're blaming each other understandable still not okay but understandable but they have been like this from the very beginning like like i said they have treated everyone like the like elsa and father france like this from the very beginning when nothing like this was happening when everything was cool everything was calm everything was cool they treated them like this so I, I don't have any remorse for people like this who are the, this is literally what they are from the very inside from the very core it's not that the situation or the the emergency the panicky situation is making them panic and they're acting like this no they have been like this from the very beginning so i don't have any remorse for the villagers here at least like like yeah all of them are trash Except, like I said, a few of them, like I said, that, that lady, um, maybe the village chief as well. But the village chief as well, I'm, I wasn't really happy with him. Like, he, he, he yeah, I, I didn't like him. But at least he's, he's at least, like, willing to listen to others. Not like these people. Um, like, you know, anyways. <clears throat> uh, that's right, she stays in church all day and never comes out to help in the field. Yeah? Like you, what? <laughs> that is hilarious. What? What? <laughs> Bro, <I> think, <laughs> she's she's in the church all day because she's trying to make this situation okay. She's le writing letters to different people asking for backup and everything. And you're complaining about her not coming to the fields. What do you guys do? These people literally don't. Lawrence himself mentioned. They don't get up at the morning. They laze around every day, you know. And like, this is not the way people act when, you know, in, in a time like this. Always, like, you know, like, they, they get up quick. They, they go to the field. They do their thing, you know. And they're complaining about Elsa coming to the fields. You guys the, yourselves don't do your work properly. You're complaining about others. Shut the hell up. And what, what are you on about? She, she's, she's the sister. She's the, like, you know, of, of the church. She, what, is, what, is she, she's, what is she supposed to do? Good God. All the wheat harvest this year was thanks to Lord Truel. Okay, you know what? Whatever. You ask your Lord Truel for help. I'm pretty sure Lord Truel wouldn't even help you. Like, seeing you guys, like, you know, like, act like this. I don't know what type of a god this, you know, like, this serpent god is. But I feel like he'll also be disappointed looking at you guys. You're like, bruh. A church girl like her. Okay, you know what? <laughs> this is just gonna piss me off even more. Okay, so. Yeah, you know what? Screw them. Like, you know, they, they, these guys need to get the taste of their own medicine. They need to, like, you know, they, they'll. Unless or until they understand, like, like, now that Elsa and everyone is leaving, they'll understand. And, you know, like, they'll. Or hopefully they'll understand. I don't know. Like, you know, these people seem extremely, like, stupid. I'm pretty sure they will still won't understand. They'll probably blame each other after this. Now that Elsa's gone, they'll start blaming each other, probably. I'm pretty sure they might suddenly start blaming the, 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 the village chief now. That Elsa's, now that Elsa's leaving, they'll probably be like, oh, it's your fault. You, like, you know, like, you're a village chief and you still wasn't able to. <laughs> I, I can see that happening now. You know, because that's what's happened. These, these are the peep type of people who just needs a scapegoat. You know, they cannot take responsibility on their own. They just need someone to put their blame on, you know, and just run away from it. Yeah. Okay, every villager needs to check how much money they have. Okay, all that stuff. So after that, the village chief says, tells Elsa, I'm sorry, this is painful for you, but endure it for now. Um, like I said, uh, you know, like, the, I still don't like, I, I don't like the village chief either, but at least he's willing to listen, or, and at least he's just, you know, a lot more even if he is probably thinking the same as the villagers at least he's not showing it outside the other people are complete trash 
but at least the village chief is a little bit better than them. But I still don't like him. I don't know. Like he he, just, he also rubs me the wrong way. The one I'm comp the only person here I'm completely okay with is that lady, and that's the only person. All the other people here are just yeah. Okay, then after that, you know, Lawrence talks to Hollow about what's going on, and they deduce that obviously Enver is probably the one who is trying to do this. Okay. So, here we go. So, this is where they're like, what should we do? So, Hollow's like, if we run, it would be like admitting we poisoned the wheat, which is fine, but then again, he has a reputation. Here we go. Your image will be posted everywhere. Uh, my love as a merchant will be ruined. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, then we have, could we seek help from that association of yours? And then he's like, okay, you know what? And then he's like, oh yeah, you, you are literally a wolf. You can run. So if I rode on your back, flee to another town faster. Mm. All right. It would be a huge problem if news got out that a merchant poisoned some wheat. Association would fervently deny it. Yeah, so that's what they're trying to do now. Because obviously they can't leave this alone because everyone will blame them and his reputation would be ruined. They're trying to go to the association to make sure that doesn't happen. If that's the case, the ones trying to entrap us may give up and then they will try to blame Eva and Elsa then by the end, eventually. Yeah. Evan, yeah, they blame Evan since he could poison the okay. game. The villagers have always been suspicious. Hall's like, okay, then I'll carry him as well. But then he's like, but then Elsa. And she's like, okay, then I'll carry her as well. So, you know, you three. You're foolishly good natured, you know. Goodness, how troublesome. Yeah, okay, you know what? Yeah, I, I think I'm right. That's exactly what's going to happen. They, like, you know, as we can see, what Lawrence is going to do now is, you know, like, obviously, he'll, he'll, he'll get on top of Hollow, uh, take Evan and um, Elsa with them and leave this place, obviously. But as we don't get to see, L Lawrence will have to make sure that this, his reputation is still intact. He's a merchant. So he'll go to the association and like, you know, the association will probably do something and he'll, they'll be like, all right, you know what, leave this to us. And the association will probably do everything to make sure that they vouch for Lawrence and be like, in no way Lawrence is someone like that. He is, because it makes sense, you know, like they are thinking that Enver is like conspiring with Lawrence and they're doing this, you know. So if Lawrence goes to the association and association is like, no, this guy here, he has been with us for a long time. He has a very clean sheet, you know, he has never done anything bad like that. And we trust him, you know, we vouch for him. So in no way is he involved in this. If such a big association says something like that, vouches for Lawrence, in no way can Enver try to blame him. They'll have to give up, you know. And once that happens, as Lawrence says, they'll try to then pin the blame on Evan and then eventually Elsa. So what to do about the situation? Take both of them as well, you know. So now what's going to happen is that since we are taking Elsa and Evan with us, They'll probably settle down somewhere else and live their life. Lawrence and Hollow will go on their own journey. And Ember, they, <laughs> their whole focus will fall on the village of Tereo. You know, now the villagers of Tereo, up until now, they were just, you know, like, just depending on Father Franz and Elsa. Now both of them are gone, you know. Now they will have to face this on their own, you know. They, and, and then they'll realize, like, you know, like, like the problem that I'm, and, and like I said, I'm, I'm generally not sure how these people are going to act at this. I feel like what's going to happen is that after, like, realizing that Elsa's gone, they'll have no one else to blame this on. So they'll start blaming each other and they'll probably destroy themselves from the inside eventually. And taking opportunity, taking advantage of them, that end will probably, like, like start the taxation again which is going to destroy them even more and then they'll just capture them and take over the whole place i can see that ending like that or maybe not we'll see you know but that is one way of happening like because 
technically now Lawrence has gotten everything from here. You know, he, he got that the information. Hollow already read that book. Everything is fine. Their job is done here. Elsa's job is done here. He's she's along with Evan, and now they can just leave and just leave and just literally do nothing. Like, um, but I guess Lawrence. Uh, did, wait, did Lawrence give them money? I think so. Yeah, okay, Lawrence did mention that, oh, Hollow did mention that you'll be, you know, you'll be at a big loss here. But he's like, it's fine, nothing you can do about it. I cannot really take the wheat, which is true. I mean, he, he brought the wheat and everything. He cannot really carry that because he's going on, like, you know, like Hollow's back. He cannot carry the wheat and everything. His carriage is also here. That's also gone. So, you know, those are the loss that he'll probably face. But yeah, there you go. Okay, so after this, we'll see the village chief asking, talking to uh, Lawrence and, you know, like, Lawrence is like, Lawrence is like, oh, we are in no way involved with Enbe. And he's like, really, you, you promise? And he's like, yeah, I promise. I, I'm not with them. In the end, he's like, okay, you know what? I trust you. And then he's like, trust you, but, you know, you have to give us a little bit of money and uh, your wisdom. Um, uh, then he's like, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll give you wisdom, but money. And he's like, okay, I won't ask you to lend it for free of charge. Um, we will ensure your safety if you give us money. So his Lawrence is like, oh, so you're literally threatening us. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> elegant way of saying like blackmailing others. He's literally like, oh, you give us money. We will ensure your safety. <laughs> what, <laughs> what type of, a <laughs> that is a very elegant way of threatening someone, you know? Bruh. The only reason I did not simply tie you up as a culprit was because you brought gifts. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, Lawrence is like, whatever. You know, like after everything is got done, everything is okay, I'll get my compensation from you. And he's like, I understand. I don't trust him. Like, really. These people, I don't trust them, any one of them. Okay, this is where Lauren says that, okay, you know what's going to happen? Let me tell you. Uh, first and foremost, you will not be able to pay back the money for the wheat. So they'll demand you credit them towards the wheat you harvest next year. Obviously, um, the village chief is like, what do you, does that mean? And he says they will negotiate the price of next year's wheat and buy it at that price now. So basically, um, I see. So there, they'll be like, okay, next year... Um, I'll pay this much for your wheat. Obviously, they have no way of knowing whether next year the wheat will be able to reach that amount and whether they'll be able to make a profit out of it. If not, it's a lot. And I'm pretty sure Envy will probably like, like, you know, like charge like the, the, the make them charge the minimum amount so that they can get the maximum profit. You know, they'll negotiate the price and buy it at the price now. So, for example, let's say that. Um, this year they were able to get the wheat for i'm just like making like a random amount of 50 coins you know so they'll be like okay next year we will pay 40 coins for the amount of wheat that you sell us so next year it doesn't matter if the crops are less you know like if the less amounts of crops are there they will have to sell it for 40. Uh, no not less sorry if it's a huge amount of crop they still have to sell it for 40. you know so they'll make a huge loss out of it it doesn't matter. So something like that. Or if, you know, like, yeah, so something like that, I guess. So that would mean if they keep making loss year after year, they'll start going into debt. Wouldn't they? I think so. Okay. Negotiate the price of next year's wheat and buy it at this price. Okay. However, since they're buying something that doesn't exist yet, um, They'll haggle down the price. Like I said, they, they will be like charging the minimum amount for them. They'll be like, oh, this is like 20 coins worth, even though it was probably like 50 coins worth. You know, and since it doesn't exist, they're like, yeah, there you go. Um, you'll be forced to make up the difference with the falling year's wheat, obviously. Because they're buying it on credit. They'll be like, oh, next year. It'll, it'll come, like, you know, it'll, it'll like fill up that void. But this cycle will repeat because they'll continue doing it. And increasingly, this, it will become difficult each year for your village. And in the end, they'll probably take advantage of your weakness. 
and end the contact made with Father France. And then by the end of it, they'll, they'll attack you guys if you are not able to, you know, something like that. Okay. Um, so, okay, Lawrence says that, is that really a coincidence? And he's like, oh, the cursed wheat is black and sticky. Um, everyone in the village can recognize it. It's unlikely that uh, enough to kill someone was carelessly mixed into our harvest. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he's like, uh, I have talked to Elsa and she suspected Enver. And then he's like, oh, I failed uh, the, everyone as a village chief. I cannot believe they attack us in this way. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Like I said, I'm, I'm okay with this guy. This, the village chief seems at least better than the others because at least he's taking risk, like, you know, like blaming himself and taking responsibility of what he wasn't able to do, which is fine. Everyone makes mistakes. But what pissed me off the most is like the other people. They're just blaming others for, you know, their own problems. All right. Anyways, yeah. Like I said, they'll need to learn the hard way. These type of people, they don't learn. In, in the normal manner. They'll need to fall flat on the ground on their face and that's only the, when they'll understand. <clears throat> okay, so then uh, Lawrence goes and is going to speak to Elsa, you know. Okay, so here you can see, um, like Evan was also there, so Lawrence is like, oh, take this money, this, I trust, you know, this money, this is my, you know, it's merchants, obviously, like the main thing, the money, the merchants. You know, like, they... Wait a minute, what does he say? Just a minute. Um, oh, here we go. Any merchant would cry if they drop this pass. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, there you go. Giving, me giving this to you means I trust you. You know, or you can trust me. Um, so there you go. Anyway, so after that, you can see Elsa talks to Lawrence and Lawrence says, uh, Elsa says like, my backer is mainly supporting me because of my father, which makes sense. Um, so, you know, if I ask for more, they'll completely lose my backing. Right. And then Lawrence says like, I'm, we're planning on running away. Obviously not like running away like that, but running away and going to the association and making sure that their reputation seems intact. Okay. So he's like, she's like, wait, like, I don't think you guys can run away that quickly. And he's like, oh, you've forgotten who my companion here is. And then <laughs> Elsa remembered and says like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. Then why haven't you fled? So first and foremost, he says, I haven't read the books. We need to do it because that's why we were here. And then he's also like, but then also the fact that Evan will be blamed. And he's like, she's like, you can, you're confident you can run away with Evan. And he's like, yeah, but not only him, but you as well. Yeah. Anyways, but she, he's like, before any of that, we need to read the book, one book, at least it has been hidden under the altar. And then they realize that, uh, like, Evan is eavesdropping on them. So they open the door and, uh, you know, like, Elsa's like, all right, Evan, just go and bring that book. And Evan is like, okay, fine. Okay, so. After that, um, he, he brings a book. And this part confused me so much lawrence goes and uh, not lawrence hollow goes and grabs it and runs away and i'm like wait what's going on but yeah he, she was that i guess you could say um you know like that much impatient to read it that's why so lawrence also follows him okay so after that lawrence goes and meets okay i need to read this part because a few things a conversation happens here which i need to understand okay so Hollow says, if I tear this book apart in anger, will you apologize on my behalf? Because obviously it has like stuff written about Yoitsu and how it got destroyed. So if she loses her and you know, and he's like, oh, I don't mind apologizing, but, it, but don't tear the book apart just to wipe your <laughs> tears. She's like, you would happily buy my tears at a high price. And Lawrence is like, it would be, no, it would be ways not to cry before you. She, he's like such an expensive, such expensive gems. I'll have to make sure they're not fake. So he's basically like, I'm. I'll make to make sure you're not, 
you know, crying crocodile tears. <laughs> Anyways, typical banter basically, you know, nothing important here. Anyways, so after that, she's like, I need to read this alone. And Lawrence is like, okay, keeps the candle there and then, you know, he leaves. Anyways, after that, he sees Elsa and, you know, Evan talking. And Evan Lawrence is like, okay, you know what? Let me give you a little bit of my wisdom. Okay. So he asks, just a minute. Uh, okay, I need to read this part. According to Village Head Sam, we'll be seven to Rimmer coins short. Okay, if they return the wheat to us. So that's a lot, you know, as Lawrence says. Um, that's not all. Uh, since the wheat we stored can no longer be used, okay, we need money for food. Okay. I thought things wouldn't come. Oh, because if, you know, if it's been poisoned, so then, okay. I thought things wouldn't come to this as long as we had father's money. So they're short on money and they don't have anything to eat, basically. It's like they're screwed on both sides. Okay, their way of thinking isn't wrong. Okay, this is what Lawrence says, like when Elsa says, as long as we had father's contract. And he's like, yeah, it's fine to think like that. However, the villagers never understood the greatness of that blessing. There you go. They are like, they, they're, you know, they, they were, uh, what's that word? Um, as he says, they never understood what a great thing that was. They took advantage of it. Um, I heard from my father that farmers in other villages work hard. There you go. Through doing odd jobs throughout the winter, they earn, try to earn as much money as possible so their land isn't taken from them. But here, yeah, people have gotten, got that in, in a silver platter. They, they literally had nothing to do with it. So they're like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. That's right. However, nothing will change if we just grieve. And then again, like I said, it's completely fine like that because, you know, I, you know, like a lot of people get stuff like this on it. But the fact that they weren't even grateful for that and treated Elsa and Father Franz like that is what is just absolutely insane. Um, right. <clears throat> okay, so after that, uh, Elsa like kind of falls unconscious. She's too stressed out. Okay, so this is where Evan later tells us, Lawrence, that so you said you'll escape. Okay. Yeah, and this is also where Evan is also like, I also don't want to just stay here and die. And obviously, Evan cannot leave here unless and until Elsa leaves. So he's like, you know, I'm completely fine with it. And he also says, like, you know, like, you see what go goes on over here in this village. Everyone says Mr. Franz is a benefactor. No one in the village really appreciates it. Um, yeah. They never listen to their, his teachings. They always given, they've always given their God a ton of offerings, but have never offered a single piece of bread to the church. Without the village head or Miss Ima, we would have starved to death a long time ago. There you go. Like those two were the only ones. And like I said, those two are fine. I, I, st I still don't like the village head a, you know, a little bit because of, but I guess like he had nothing else to do. Like what really kind of made me mad about him is the fact that he literally tells him like, oh, give us money. And we'll literally give you nothing for that, you know. And But if I think about it, he had nothing else to do. Like, what can he even do? But the other villagers are trash. I, I, I also, like I said, I, they're just absolute garbage. Right. Yeah, and then Miss Ima, that's her name. She comes in, like, the outside village is not, you know, good. Like, obviously, it's not... Like, you know, like all sunshine and rainbows, but it might be easier than she, she's like, like, she's like, yeah, you know what? The world outside world is difficult, but this place is garbage. So, you know what? You guys leave. That's better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then she says, yeah, I hope you guys run away. So she's like, how is plan on escaping? I love how Lawrence is like, oh, if you found... You know, like, uh, you know, her story about uh, that person that, that um, if a man can come across a maiden brewing beer in the mountains. Yeah. 
if we meet so odd from another man to encounter something equally strange and she's like oh some kind of a fairy and she's like he's like yeah something like that <laughs> anyways the lawrence goes to hollow and hollow's finished reading okay you know what i need to understand this part i it, it kind of went over my head what happened here so hollow says if you were curious you should read it so he opens the book and comes to a page where there is like wolves and you know like it's i'm guessing it's related to yoitsu and there's a paper in the middle oh i was so confused i was like what is that paper for hollow put that paper in didn't he so that lawrence could open it and read it and read that it's like a bookmark is that a bookmark i think so okay he says the gods of the land all fled in terror in the time it took for nuts of a tree to fall, Yoisu was shredded apart by the bear's claw. So as he says, like, they ran away, that means. So that's why Hollow's like, you know what? I'm glad that they were able to run away. You know, even if the village is destroyed, the people at least are fine. Um, that's all there is. Um, okay, I see an infuriating game. Okay, wait a minute, just a minute. Let me go back a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. The gods of the land. What? Wait, what does this mean? The gods of the land. So, wait a minute. Is he, Okay, you know what? I feel like I had a misunderstanding about Yoitsu. Is Yoitsu like a place where everyone who lived there was like hollow? You know, like... Uh, God damn. You know what? I, I completely had a misunderstanding up until now, I think. I thought Yoitsu like, is like a normal village. Like, you know, where like humans lived. And Hollow was like stayed there as I don't know, like a god, like a like a god or something. She stayed there. Like I thought, like Hollow was like the only one who's like a wolf over there. But I think now I understand. So Yoisu is a place where everyone was, as as he says, the gods of the land all fled in terror. So everyone who lived there were like Hollow. They weren't human. Oh, I I see. I think so. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um. Right. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, um, so that's that. So after that, okay, so Lawrence here, wait a minute, looks at the book closely and he's like, wait, this is it? And, okay, I don't understand this part. Hollow says, I sense an infuriating gaze on me. Is it my imagination? And she, he says, I'm not. No, I am right. Wait, why infinity in gaze? I don't understand this part. And he says like, I'm sorry, don't get so angry. I'm satisfied to hear that my old... Oh, okay, I think I understand. Why infuriating gaze? I think Lawrence was like, had an infuriating gaze because he, as he says, like, this is it. So he is not happy about the fact that that's it and Hollow is okay with it, you know, because Hollow has been wanting to know about this place for so long. So it's like one and two page only, and that's all that's written. So Lawrence is like, wait, you're okay with this? Like, and that's why he was, he had like an infuriating gift. And that's why Hollow's like, why are you looking at me like that? And that's when, that's why Hollow says, I'm satisfied to hear that my old friends seem to have gone. Yeah, so Lawrence was thinking like there needed to be more. And he was infuriated at the fact that Hollow's okay with this small amount of information, even though she was like, she has been looking for this for so long and she wants to know more. And that is why Hollow kind of lets him know that, you know, like, I'm just satisfied hearing that my old friends have gotten away. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, there was nothing else. Nothing in this world ever goes as one. Well. Okay, so there you go. Right, okay, I understand that part now. Like, I, I, this part kind of confused me because first and foremost, I was confused about the fact what that paper was. I think it was just a bookmark, now that I'm looking at it again. And also the fact that he says, like, an infuriating gaze, this part also confused me. But now that I'm, like, re-watching this section, I think I understand what happened. Like, he was just infuriated at the fact that Hollow's okay with this only. But Hollow's like, you know what? I, it was, I wasn't, like, looking for revenge or anything. I just wanted to know if everyone was okay or not. So everyone is okay, even though my place is destroyed, everyone ran away. So they're fine somewhere in this world. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, so they're like, alright, we need to escape. Mm. Okay, so yeah, this is where Hollow says, like, you know, you're taking a great loss this time. And he's like, oh, it can't be helped. We cannot take the wheat with there you go. Also, the carriage they cannot take with them. Goods were expensive and more portable. We'd have options. Um, you, you're speaking of the pepper you sold once before. There is something more valuable than easier to acquire in this price. Of trust. As he says, that's why he needs to go to the association, talk to them, and make sure that you know everything is okay here. Like his the reputation doesn't doesn't go into the mud. It seems I will have to sell your trust once it grows higher in value. You don't know how paranoid of you I've become now that you tease me so much. And <laughs> yeah, then I'll have to regain that trust. Anyways, a banter again. You know. Oh, Hollow also mentions that you've never blamed me for the trouble we are in because technically it was me who told you to come here. And then he's like, oh, then I have to tighten your food and drinking budget. Anyways, while they're having this banter, you know, like, again, people are just outside, like, thumping on the door and everything. So, Elsa's like, oh, let me take care of it. But then, like, Ilma is like, no, like, you stay here. You just, you just be fanning the flames. So, she kind of, like, bangs on the door and she's like, shut the hell up, you guys, outside. And they kind of quieten down for a moment. You know, anyways, and now they're talking about, like, they'll need to leave, obviously. Yeah, and this is where she says, like, you know, like, you guys leave here. This place is not for you. If it's hard to make a you know living everywhere then but it's better to look for a new life out there with someone you trust so she's like yeah you, you guys will have to face a lot of trouble from here onwards as well but at least you two will have each other and you'll not be hunted down or hounded by people like happening is happening over here so just stay go somewhere settle down somewhere else and you know there you go you might have to give up a lot of things but there's a lot you would gain in that way Hmm. That's so interesting because on all the stuff that she's saying, it can be applied to Lawrence and Hollow as well. You know, as she's saying, you in the journey you'll lose a lot of things, but you'll gain a lot. You know, you can literally apply the same you know like thing to Hollow and Lawrence as well. Um, choosing your for, for path at a fork takes only an instant. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So yeah, this is where Elsa finally says like I need to, I like to run, and obviously she's like okay, you guys will run, I can understand. How will you go there? And Hollow's like, don't worry. Keep in mind that whatever you see today is just a dream. She takes out her uh, hoodie and the ears come out, <laughs> and Ilma's like, what the hell? Evan was also surprised, and she's like, okay, you know what? Yeah, maybe I'm a bit drunk now, so I'll probably forget this by tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, so after that, they're like, how should we go? So they're like, there's a secret passage down there. Let's go through there. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, just a minute. Oh, another thing I need to understand here. Okay. It is not as though your hometown will disappear tomorrow. Be glad it still exists. No, wait, wait, just a minute. Wait, 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 I need to read this part. Well, okay, she says, Emma says, well, it's lucky enough to be able to make some preparations for your escape. It's not as though your hometown will disappear tomorrow. Be glad it still exists, Hollow says. Obviously, she's talking about her own situation, Yoichi as well, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you too, Miss Fairy. Do not lump me together with such weak creatures. Um, we will prepare immediately. Okay, off you go. This part. Even I have lost to her strong sense of presence. Um, do not worry. This is the only human form I can take. That is unfortunate. I prefer a woman with a more ample figure. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was so con I, I didn't understand what she's talking about here. 
Okay, I think I understand. So again, it's like typical banter, I think. So she's like, oh, like her presence, like obviously because we've heard, like, you know, we've seen, like, you know, that lady, she, she has a huge presence. And that is why Lo Hollow says like, oh, like, you know, even I would have lost to her, something like that. And then she, he's like, oh, you know, like, what is that part? That is unfortunate, a preferable woman with more. Okay, I think it's, this is also banter, you know. This part kind of confused me as well. I was like, wait, what are they talking about? <laughs> I thought like Lahal was talking about taking some other, like, you know, human form or something. But she's like, no, this is the only human form I can take. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, it's kind of like that. It's like banter. She's like, oh, I cannot, like, you know, even I cannot stand up to that presence. You know, at which Hollow's like, Lawrence is like, oh, thank God, you know, like, um, no, sorry, um, uh, Hollow's like, oh, don't worry, like, this is the only human form I can take, at which Hollow and Lawrence kind of makes, like, you know, like a joke of it and says like, oh, like, you know, I would prefer someone with a more ample, you know, yeah, so it's, it's just like, you know, like, they're joking around about, you know, and also the fact that Hollow kind of mentions here, this is the only form that she can take, so she cannot become someone else or something. This is the only, so this is her true self, basically that. Yeah, and that's where it ended. Okay, today's episode discussion became a bit too long, but I need to talk about quite a few things today because of the whole situation. Anyways, I'll end it here, and that was today's episode. Now, next episode, obviously, they'll probably be running away, and Hollow, Lawrence and Hollow will probably go to the association, talk about the situation, and make sure their reputation is intact. So, what's going to happen with Tedo and Ember? who knows like you know like they'll probably have to fend for themselves now i'm not really sure so let's wait and see and that is it guys that was my reaction let's wait for and see what happens and how this concludes and next episode is i think is the final episode of this season okay so thanks for watching guys this was my reaction to episode 23 if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know i'll check them out that is it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Spice and Wolf. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.